our next uh, lesson of practice problems that we'll be doing is for uh, Unit 2, Lesson 7. So the first thing that we need to do is to decide whether each table could represent a proportional relationship or not. And then if, in fact, it is proportional, we need to identify the constant of proportionality. So really, we're looking for a proportion constant of proportionality to decide if it's proportional to begin with. At this point, it really, you know, makes a lot of sense to remember when we go in this direction from left to right, we multiply. When we go back, we divide. So we might as well simply start dividing each of these. So if we had 85 divided by 5, we know that that's 17. And feel free to take out your calculators to do these. There's no reason to torture yourself if you find these difficult, because really we're just looking for the constant of proportionality, if in fact there is one, and to be able to identify it. So this one is 79 divided by 10. You should recall that when you uh, divide by 10, we move that decimal place back one place, so it's 7.9. So, so far we really haven't had one that we need a calculator for, but if it makes you feel more comfortable to be able to double check, that is perfectly fine. So next one is 73 divided by 20, and I did in fact use a calculator for that one. So it's times 3.65. That'd be equal 75. And then for the last one, we would do 67 divided by 40. And let me put this over here before I forget. And uh, 67 divided by 40 would be 1.675. So you can see that each one of these is... Um, Each one of these has a different um, number, scale factor, constant, it's not constant, so a different number that each one is multiplied by to go from left to right. So we can safely say that this one is not proportional. Okay, so the next one, we're really, we're going to be doing the same thing. I mean, I would think that you very well may be able to look at this one especially these first two, and identify whether or not it's proportional. Um, the cost of fountain drinks at the hot, hot dog hut. Left to right, we multiply. Right to left, we divide. That is the same every single time. So if I were to do 149 divided by 16, I would get 0... 0 0.09, that is a 9, let me try and redo that, it's a 9, sorry about that, uh, the next one would be one fifty nine dollar fifty nine. divided by 20, again I can use my calculator, and that's going to be 0 0.09, it's 795. We don't even need all those. We can already see that they aren't the same. But just to double check, we should always, you know, keep going right through. 1.89 divided by 30 is 0 0.063. So again, this one is also not proportional. Okay, next thing, a taxi service charges $1 for the first one-tenth of a mile, and then 10 cents for each additional one-tenth of a mile after that. So the first thing we need to do is to fill in the rest of the table, and then decide if, in fact, it's proportional. So, $1 for the first one-tenth of a mile and then 10 cents for each additional half mile, one tenth of a mile after that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one tenth away from that nine tenths. So nine tenths 
minus one tenth is eight tenths. And then I know it's 10 cents for each one tenth of a mile. So there's eight tenths here. So I'm just going to take that eight and multiply it by 0 0.10, and that's going to equal 80 cents. Oops, sorry, 80 cents plus that original dollar. That was why I took away the first one tenth plus one dollar. So for this, you should have gotten one dollar and 80 cents for this one. The next one, we've got two minus one tenth. Well, I know that's going to leave me with one and nine tenths. But don't forget, I'm being charged for every tenth of a mile. So I want to know how many tenths that is. One and nine tenths is a total of 19 tenths. I'm then going to take that 19 and multiply it times that 10 cents. That should give me $1.90 plus the other dollar. And that's going to give me $2.90 for this one. Imagine you should see where this is going for the next one, but let's go ahead. We've got 3 and 1 tenth minus 1 tenth. That leaves me with 3. It's three, three holes. Well, how many tenths is that? That is 30 tenths. I'm going to take that 30 and multiply it times the 10 cents, and that should give me three dollars. We've got to divide 30 dimes, plus one more dollar. That's going to give me four dollars for here. And then for the last one, I've got 10. It's going to be very similar to when we just had that whole number of 3, but obviously a different number. So I've got 10 minus 1 tenth. That's going to equal 9 and 9 tenths. How many tenths is that? That's 99 tenths. I know I'm going to use that 99. 99 times... 0 0.10, my 10 cents, is going to be $9.90. And I'm going to take that 9.90 and add $1 to that. And that gives me $10.90. Now, hopefully you noticed that every time we did this, we had to subtract and then we multiplied. We had to subtract and then we multiplied. Subtract, multiply, subtract, multiply. The fact that we had to do more than one step, more than just multiplying from the distance traveled to the price, that's enough for us to know that this is not proportional. Okay, so the next thing, we've got a rabbit and a turtle in a race. And we want to know is the relationship between the distance traveled and the time proportional for either of them? If so, write an equation to represent that relationship. So again, we're looking, is there something consistent or constant of proportionality between each of these? So, always this direction multiply. Wow, that looks terrible. Let me redo that for you. From left to right, we multiply. From right to left, we divide. So remember, we ask ourselves, how do we get from 108 to 2? Well, probably you don't know that off the top of your head, so of course you want to divide. 2 divided by 108. fraction, I can leave it like that and simply reduce it to 1 over 54. Next one, 7 point 
five divided by four hundred five. Now, obviously this is gonna be a little bit strange looking. If I were to put that in my calculator, I would come up with a number that's really kind of funny looking. So what I probably want to do is either divide this or understand that if I was to look at this, 2 times 54 actually gives me 108. So what I'm curious about is 7.5. If I multiply that times 54, does it give me 405? It sure does. Now, this is not our normal direction. This table, to be honest, is set up a little bit strangely, the way that we would normally set it up. In general, we have the time on the left and the distance on the right. But this chart, for whatever reason, does not have it like that. It's not how Mrs. De Silva would have it if Mrs. De Silva was in charge of the world, but we've all discussed that. So, unfortunately, it is set up this way, but the reality is that we need to understand the chart regardless of which way it's set up. So, since the same thing happens every single time, we can go ahead and say that this is, is proportional. Now, this one over here, again, we preferably the time is on the left, sa left side, not the distance, but time. So if we look at it the same way, in one minute, we can run 800 meters. That would mean every time, let me put that in a better color so you can see it. That would mean that every time we could multiply times 800. Now, five times 800, I'm sure you can already see where this is going. This is not gonna work out because um, 900 divided by five is 180, so I would be multiplying by 180. Already we can tell this is not a proportional relationship. So this one is not proportional. Um, now, write an equation. So, again, typically, <laughs> even the equation that we should set up here is, is a little bit different. So, if we say that, I'm going to actually go ahead and write this out the way that it should look. If I say, let d equal the distance, and you already know that this is the case here because we've seen this a few times before now, and let t equal the time, we know that the d distance is going to be the constant of proportionality, which we figured out to be 54, multiplied by the time. So there is your equation. Okay, each table, what is the constant of proportionality? So they're telling us outright that there is, in fact, a constant of proportionality for each of these. In other words, they're telling us that they are all pr proportional relationships. So, as always, we know the constant of proportionality tells us what to multiply by. So, 2 times what equals 14? Well, it's 7. 5 times 7 equals 35. 9 times 7 is 63. And one-third times that seven is seven-thirds. So the constant of proportionality for this one is seven. Again, from left to right, three times what is 360? If you don't know that, you can, of course, grab a calculator if you need to. But hopefully you recognize that that 36 is there. And know that three times 12 is 36. And therefore, it would be 120. Again, let's see this 5 times 120, does it work? Well, 5 times 12 we know is 60. Throw that other zero at the end there. Again, it's 120. 8 times 12 
is 96, so 8 times 120, again, is going to give us that 960. 12 times 12 is, in fact, 144, so therefore another 120. So our constant of proportionality in this one is 120. Now, this next one, we should notice that when we go from left to right, that it gets smaller. So if it gets smaller, that means we're multiplying by a fraction. And if we're not sure what that fraction is, we go in the opposite direction to divide. So 75 times what gives me 3? I'm not really sure, so I would do 3 divided by 75. I reduce that by finding the shared gazinta. The shared gazinta is 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 75 divided by 3, of course, is 25. Feel free to think about that like quarters. How many quarters are there in 75 cents? There's three of them, so there's your 3 and 25. So 1 25th for that first one. Well, let's see if it works here. 200 times 1 25th. So in other words, how many 25s are in 200? Think about $2. How many quarters are in there? It is, in fact, 8. So that one also works. 1 25th. So we're doing this 1525 divided by 25. So you can actually put that in your calculator if you'd like, or if you wanted to work it out, you should find that 525 times, or divided by 25 is going to give us that 61. And then, same thing with 10 divided by 25. It is going to be 1 fourth, or 4 tenths, excuse me, 4 tenths, not 1 fourth. So for this one, our constant of proportionality is again, 1 over 25. Now this last one, we say to ourselves, what do we multiply 4 by to get to 10? If we're not sure, we divide. 10 divided by 4, I reduce that. I get 5 over 2, which is 2 and 1 half. So can I multiply each of these by 2 and 1 half? 2 and 1 half. So 6 times 2 and a half, well, 6 times 2 is 12. Half of 6 is 3. 12 by 6 gives us 15. 2 and a half. 2 times 22 is 44. Half of 22 is 11, gives us 55. 3 times 2 and a half. 3 times 2 is 6. Half of 3 is 1 and a half, gives us 7 and a half. So there we go. Our constant of proportionality is 2 and 1 half. And our last problem, we have Karan and Mai are standing at a corner of a rectangular field of grass. So we're assuming that they're at a football field or a soccer field of some sort. So we'll just make ourselves a little sketch of this rectangle. Okay, and they're looking at the diagonal from one corner to the opposite corner. Karan says if the field were twice as long and twice as wide, so that means this is being multiplied by 2 and this is being multiplied by 2, then it, the distance would also be times 2. That's what Karan is saying. Mai is saying that it would be more than twice as far since the diagonal is longer than the side lengths. Do you agree with either of them? Well, hopefully, especially since due to the way that I just drew this out, we can see that if we multiply both the length and the width by 2, that would mean that the scale factor is 2. And if the scale factor is equal to 2, then this diagonal would also be multiplied by 2, just like we showed here. So that would mean that it's proportional and that Kiran, I think I've said that different every single time. If this is actually somebody's name, I apologize. But that means that Kiran is correct. 
and that's because there's a scale factor of two.